full and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care is called stewardship. Watch Stewardship with SNB on Irish TV. It's the 10th day of January 2019. It's another edition of the program Stewardship with SNB live from the studios of Riverside Television, Channel 22, Port Harcourt. Well, as usual, before we begin, let's have my take. Record shows that in every 20 years, Nigeria as a nation goes to a general election. December 12, 1959 was the first general elections that ushered in the first civilian government headed by Dr. Inam Diazikwe, though supervised by the British government. What dominated electionary campaigns then was the real issues confronting the people. Another 20 years after came July 1979, general elections, precisely on the 7th of uh, uh, July 1979, there was another general elections where manifestos of different political parties dwelled on basic issues staring the people in the faces. 20 years later, precisely 27th February 1999, there was another general election with President Olusegun Obasanjo as the head of the nation. Campaigns then can also be said to be issue-based. From 1999 to 2019 is another 20 years where Nigeria will go to the polls to elect new set of leaders. What are the campaign strategies employed by the political gladiators? What messages do they have to tell the people? Will the 2019 elections be issue-based, devoid of slander, deformation of character, mudslinging, and so on and so forth? In all of these, the build-up to the 2019 election is not without the twists and turns, defections and counter-defections, court rulings, nullifications of candidates, all adding beautiful coloration to democracy. The theme of today's discourse is can 2019 electionary campaigns be issue-based? With me in the studio live to do justice to this all-important theme is a man who does not need much introduction in the state, the number three man in the state, the speaker of the 8th Rivers Assembly, Right Honorable Ikuin Ebani Owachi. Oh, formally introduce him when we return from this short break. Please stay with us. SNB holds you to account. Whether you are in school or not, any opportunity will create for skill acquisition. Please avail yourself that opportunity. Like I said, you can you also... You around that, you know that they have what is called bush market. Very early in the morning, as early as 4 o'clock, down the road. I am a lawyer. Let me show me. The man has not cited one project, consensus project. If they are there, today. I'm saying they are not much. If they are there in the element, I don't want to join you with my brother. Watch stewardship with a SMB. Whenever, wherever, however, this time on Irish TV. The careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care is called stewardship. Watch Stewardship with SNB on Irish TV. What do you do on a Thursday afternoon? Having lunch? Taking a drink? Watching TV in a living room or office? How much do you know about the politics, economy, and how monies are being expended by those saddled with the responsibility of managing human, material, and natural resources. It's daring, incisive, revealing, and informative. Watch Stewardship with SMB every Thursday at 12.30 p.m. on Irish TV. Join us. If you have just joined us, you're watching Stewardship with SMB live from Studio Rivers Television. Channel 22, Port Harcourt. As I earlier told you, my guest today is a big guest. He's in the house. He, like I said, he does not need any introductions. The number three man in River State, the Speaker of the 8th Rivers Assembly, the Right Honorable Ikuyi Ebani Owaji. Mr. Speaker, you're welcome to Stewardship. 
we're very honored to, to have you in our studio to, to today. In spite of your very crowded program, you made our time to see us. Yes, to join the conversation, you can call the number 080-3341-3360 or send text messages only to the number 080-5347-8400. You can watch us live on GoTV channel 103 and Star Time channel 113. You can also watch our previous editions of the program on YouTube at Stewardship with SNB. Join our social media platforms on Facebook and Twitter still at Stewardship with SNB. I am Solomon Nelson Braid as your anchorman. Mr. Speaker, once again, welcome. Thank you. Now, very recently, about a fortnight ago or so, the governor uh, presented uh, the 2019 budget to the River State House Assembly plenary. And you are the Speaker of the House. Are there areas you disagree with the figures allocated to various sectorial areas? Well, thank you so much for finding me fit to appear on your program today. Let me give you kudos. Thank you so much. And to say that in River State House of Assembly, what we try at all times to do is to do the right thing. Because when the wrong thing is done at the right time, the people and society suffer for it. There is no form of disagreement at all in terms of the presentation of budget by His Excellency, the Governor of the University of the so much in the UK, plenary chamber of the University as well as What you should understand, and I want the public to understand, um, before camera, I'm on camera. Yes. That before on the live TV. of the 2019 appropriation bill by sexiness, the median term expenditure framework was sent to the River State House of Assembly by His Excellency. The essence of that is for government to make a projection, have a medium term plan as to how monies earned by government will be spent. So that you don't just wake up because you are any money, assuming there is a windfall, you just go on spending government money. money. So you can see that the budget of 2019 were planned in such a manner that it falls within the framework of the medium term expenditure framework. It's a paper, it's a working paper of government, whereby government, once you, are, you want to undertake this particular activity, you know that there is a guideline established and resolved on the floor of the State House of Assembly that this is what you should follow. That's exactly the tune of the 2019 budget. It is before the House. You have taken first reading, you have taken second reading. By yesterday, it was debated and committed the appropriation committee. Are there gray areas in the budget that you want to adjust? Sometimes they call it padding or something. The, our budget is not a budget that you can use the phrase padding up. Mm. The River State Government budget is it is very precise. It is a planned expenditure, expenditure that is well thought out by the executive arm of government. The only question I would want you to ask, which mm. you have not asked me, maybe you'll get there. Mm. What are the novel ideas mm. that are contained in the budget mm. that will take reverse beyond where we are? Mm. So when you ask such questions, mm. I'll be able to answer. What, what, but let me tell you mm. that from what we have seen, even in terms of the debate on the floor of assembly yesterday, you know, it's a bipartisan assembly. Mm. Both APC members and PDP members agreed that the content and form of the budget, mm. they are well known, and that it covers so many areas, several sectors are covered. One of such areas that even APC members and PDP members who debated on the floor yesterday had concordance, the area of agriculture. 
where government is reprioritizing agriculture and encouraging youths mm. in the circumstance to engage in commercial farming. Over 17 billion was allocated to agriculture. That's correct. Yes. So you can now see the vision, the dream of Governor Nyesu, who is the one weekend's mm. administration. Mm. Because we have actually taken off in terms of infrastructure. So this budget is budget of sustainable uh, economic, sustain, sustainable economic, economic growth, develop, okay. or development, okay. as you may put it, it's mm. a question of semantics. Yes. But the baseline is that we have taken up and we are sustaining mm. what we have started. Mm. You, you said uh, both uh, APC and PDP agreed to uh, the figures that were allocated to various sectors of the budget. But there is one man amongst you, the, he's on the other side, who has never seen anything good that the assembly does? He picks holes. Is it a manner or something like that? He has described his budget as not workable. Do you have any defense? Well, you see, in the assembly, there are those who are actual members who are actually doing the work, who know the nitty gritty of what they are doing. And there are those who speak by virtue of establishing contact with others. For me, I am not here to put anybody in bad light because as a leader, mm. I see a lot of things and I take a lot of things as well. In the chamber, there was no different opinion. As a legislator, I rely heavily on what happens in the chamber in plenary and not hearsay. Mm. We don't dwell on what you hear or what you read on the pages of a newspaper. But anyone that happens, any debate on the floor, because reference will be made to the hazard. The hazard contains every debate, every action that takes place on the floor in plenary. So what you are asking or what you are telling me is not contained in any part of the document I refer to. But to calm your nerves, I will say that even the person, the member you are referring to under reference, called me and also apologized as a leader. Oh, I see. So, That's for interesting. whatever reason, I believe so much in democracy. Okay. I believe that for democracy to drive, for you to cherish the values and thinness of democracy in a bipartisan assembly like the River State House of Assembly, you must also give the other party, hmm. even though you have majority in the house, you must also hear the minority out, yeah, yeah. so that they express themselves. In most cases, you find that because they know that what Governor Nelson Wike is doing in reverse is the right thing. Hmm. So you also see them support the position of the majority, hmm. meaning that we are there in agreement to actually do it on behalf of our representatives and mm. take River State beyond where River State is. Mm. Okay, Mr. Speaker, let's just refresh your memory and the memory of our viewers on the budget presentation made by the Governor to plenary very recently. Studio, assist us, let's uh, take a listen to uh, the Governor presenting the 2019 budget to plenary about the fortnight ago. Let's refresh our memory. He said because the 2019 appropriation bill has set priorities for human capital development and infrastructural provision, a substantial part of the capital budget is located to the ministries of agriculture, education, employment generation and empowerment, health, sports development, women affairs, works and youth development. The governor proposed 72 billion Naira for the construction and improvement of the state's road network and transport infrastructure. Sectoral allocation of the capital budget. The sectoral allocation of the capital budget is as follows. Administration sector, 17 billion, 820 million, 704,443 Naira, 79 carbon. Economic sector, 99 billion, 53 million, 565,000, Still at 40 naira, 20 carbon. Law and justice sector, 4 billion, 350 million naira. Social sector, 127 billion, 292 million, 200,000 naira. Special heads, 50 billion, 347 million, 500,000 naira. Law repayments, 24 billion, 425 million naira. Uh, supervising the 
Congress President of Budget. Now, budgeting is different from implementation. How much implementation do we should we should Rivers will expect? Because this is an election year. The governor has presented a budget and Rivers people are also expecting implementation. How much implementation are we expecting, Mr. Speaker? Well, uh, let me say that a budget in itself does not translate into the totality of funds or revenue available to government. The implementation of a given budget for any fiscal or financial year is dependent on the availability of funds to government. So when you ask of what percentage of budget that will be imp implemented, it is the availability of funds from the sources as outlined. You know that you have the federal allocation, you have the internally generated revenue, and other sources where government will be able to earn revenue from. The availability of these revenues will determine the outcome of the budget for a given financial year. So if you look at the performance of the 2018 budget, vis-a-vis -vis the estimate that we have before the House, which is yet to be passed into law, you will find out that this is a government that sticks to its gun. The funds available are judiciously utilized. And, you know, these things, you, you, they are not in the air. They are things you see with your naked eyes. So even the common, ma the common man on the street will be able to do an assessment and come up with an inference whether a particular budget for a particular year has been implemented by government or not. Yes, some sectors given availability may suffer, but in prioritizing budgets and efforts of government, you can see that the critical sectors that have high impact on the daily lives of the citizenry, this government has been tackling up in issue. And that is why you can find other people who are not from River State saying the man has done well, the governor has done well, River State is working. That's exactly what I can tell you. But I bet you, if you look at the focus, the direction of the 2019 budget on that reference, the budget on that reference, you will also see a prioritization of key sectors, the agricultural sector, the, the uh, law and justice sector, because as a state, where there is no law and order, it means we have returned to the official state where every man is against every man. So in the circumstance, critical sectors have been taken care of in the budget. And let me also tell you, for a state like this, people will be expecting, why is it that River State is not hitting one trillion naira? Those who crafted the estimate, the contributions from the M various MDS, took into account the intervening variables that will always affect the economy in one way or the other. Take if, I, if I want to make a comparative analysis between the reverse government budget, the estimated, uh, the projected uh, estimate in terms of revenue and expenditure, vis-a-vis -vis that of the federal government. You can see that the oil price has dropped in the international market. Yeah. Meanwhile, the federal government used a particular figure as a benchmark. Yeah. So for this particular budget which the government, uh, the governor has presented before the reverse House of Assembly, it took into account all this. So you can see a budget that can be termed to be conservative but workable. And this budget, I bet you, is implementable. Good. Now, uh, uh, we'll take a short break, but before we go on, but let me ask this question, Mr. Speaker. Is the Eighth Assembly a rubber stamp of the government? In the strictest sense of the word, is there interference in the activities of assembly of which you are the speaker? Well, let me tell you, for anyone who knows me and know the type of work we undertake in the assembly, even the philosopher who propounded the theory of separation of powers, there is no watertight separation of powers amongst the three arms of government. That is fusion. To the extent of that cooperation, to the extent of that separation, there is always cooperation. You must cooperate. The essence, you must give primacy to the well-being 
of the people, which is the common good. Any government that does not take this into account, it means it's a wasted government. So if the legislature has need to cooperate with the executive arm and the judiciary, we have no regret and no apology. But I bet you the governor does not in any manner interfere with what we do in River State House of Assembly. If the governor, if there is an executive bill before the assembly, the governor is not on me, neither is he on me as a speaker, nor members of River State House of Assembly to pass any bill. We do it and we follow procedure. If I will quote myself again, while the governor presented the 2019 appropriation bill, the day he presented it on the floor, in my remarks, I did mention and clearly to the world that we must follow procedure because there are standard procedures in lawmaking to be followed. So I want to tell you that the governor does not in any way control the reverse House of Assembly in terms of what we do. We do it based on the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the functions it assigned to us, and the standing rule guiding our conduct. Because we have rules of engagement. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, now, in the coming weeks, uh, Nigeria and, of course, River State will go to the polls. And you are one of those that is contesting for the 2019 elections. You are going for uh, going back to the House, so to speak. Yes. Uh, Mr. Speaker, what, what different thing are we expecting from you? For what you have done now and what you will do? Are you going to do something different, anything different? Uh, you must be specific in so such question in terms of what in because terms of representation yes because if, if you are talking of because there are three key elements in one representing people as a representative of my people in the legislature there are three key elements representation legislation oversight all of them these are three elements and if i have represented my people for this number of years and you know legislation is something over time you you learn the art you go for training you learn more on how to do the job for me we know the minimum standard of representation you must assist your people where you have little that you earn you must also ensure that you can nominate projects for your constituency to benefit from. Mm. Then the other thing you can do is to ensure that you carry out oversight function on the executive arm of government and other and the judiciary to ensure that whatever is done, because it's done on behalf of the people, mm. that your people are also protected. That's exactly what we do as legislators. So if you're asking me if I will do something different, except the constitution of Nigeria would have now been amended to say that my job in will be different from areas, what has been. In these core areas you have mentioned, now you are going back to the house. The people may be asking, what are the things you will do differently when you go back to the house as a representative of your people? Well, you know, uh, the, the work of the legislator is different from that of the executive. When you talk, I have it been able to attracting attracting amenities to your area and empowering you, youth and all uh, of that. Uh, 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 and of uh, course, the uh, the constituency fund that uh, every member is given. No, no member is given constituency fund. You know, I I stand to be corrected, and oh, let me so. correct that impression. Okay. As a member of River State House of Assembly, you do well to nominate projects for your constituency. But in the execution, which is implementation of law, it is not the duty of the legislature to implement. It is the executive that implements. But you nominate because you are representing people. You will be able to know the needs of your people. Based on that assessment, you are able to tell the executive, look, this type of project, if cited in my constituency, it will have high impact. It will benefit my people. To that extent, that is the level of participation. Then the job is now awarded by the executive to a contractor who executes. Yeah. So this whole idea of money is given to the legislators as constituency project fund is wrong. It's not correct. Let me correct that impression so that we know. Now we'll take a short break and I will turn back to the live studio 
But Mr. Speaker, uh, before we return back, uh, we take a break, let me ask this question. Uh, the PDP in the state seems to be marrying over the recently uh, the court verdict uh, given by the High Court in Port Harcourt, nullifying all candidates of the EPC from contesting for the 2019 elections. Politically speaking, what does it portend for the 2019 election? But, but just before you answer the question, we'll take a short break and then we'll return with response from the speaker. Please, let's take a short break. We'll join you. Stewardship with SNB. 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 SNB holds you to account. Whether you are school or not, any opportunity will create for skill accusation. Please avail yourself that opportunity. But like I said, you can you see around that you know that they have what is called bush packet. Very early in the morning, as early as four o'clock, down the road. Yeah, I'm a lawyer. Doing Let me show me. The man has not cited one project, consensus project. Mm -hmm. From that if they are there today, I'm saying they are not much. They are very relevant. I don't want to join issue with my brother. Watch stewardship with a SMB whenever, wherever, however, this time on Irish TV. A federal high court in Portugal on Monday restrained the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, from recognizing any candidates of the All Progressive Congress APC for the 2019 general elections in River State. The court also nullified all nominations of the APC in River State for the forthcoming elections in 2019. The court ruled specifically that the APC cannot participate in the governorship, Senate, House of Representatives and House of Assembly elections during the 2019 polls in River State. Justice Kola Waleo Motoshe in his judgment in the suit filed by Senator Magnus Abbey and others versus Rivers APC and others declared the APC for failing to respect the law must bear the consequences of our disobedience of the law. Justice Omotisho stated that the direct and indirect primaries of the River State APC are illegal, nulled and void. The court further declared that both the direct and indirect primaries were held during the pendency of the suit at the River State High Court. According to the court, the APC conducted the indirect primaries in gross disrespect of the pending suit before Justice Chiwendi Wogo of the River State High Court. He noted that the judgment of Justice Chiwendi Wogo nullifying the primaries of the APC in River State is yet to be set aside by our appellant court. Hence, it remains valid. The court therefore held that the name sent by the Amechi faction and the National Working Committee of the APC to INEC for the 2019 general elections were illegal and should be disregarded. He posited that the direct primaries conducted by the Senator Magnus Abbey faction were illegal because the National Working Committee of the APC did not monitor or participate in the process. Justice Omotesho added that Justice Chiwendi Wogu was clear when he nullified all primaries and congresses held during the pendency of the suit, which included the direct primaries conducted by the Abbey faction. Stewardship with SNB. 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 Well, if you have just joined us, you are still watching the program Stewardship with SNB, live from the studios of Irish TV, Channel 22, Port Harcourt. To contribute to this program, you can call the numbers 080-3341-3360. Again, 080 is there already on the screen. You can just go straight to the screen and then take the numbers and make your contributions. My guest has, also, has still been the Right Honorable Ikunyi Ebane Owaji. Ikunyi Owaji Ebane. Okay, Ikunyi Owaji Ebane. Thank you for the correction. The Speaker of the Rivers, uh, Eighth Rivers Assembly. Mr. Speaker, you're welcome back to the program again. Thank you. Now, earlier I asked that uh, the PDP seemed to be merry over uh, the nullification by the Justice of Motorshaw uh, Court, uh, meaning that uh, no candidate of the APC will go to the polls with the PDP. Politically and legally speaking, what does it portend for the 2019 elections? Well, for me, as a candidate in the 20. 19 election for House of Assembly and Donny State constituency. I'm preparing for election in the same manner other PDP candidates. Let me correct an impression that uh, when you say PDP 
is marrying over the judge. Nobody is contesting with them. Yeah. That's what it means. It is not only two political parties that are in Nigeria. You have over 60 political parties in Nigeria, and several of those political parties have fielded candidates for the various uh, elections. The is the so, party the state. Uh, yes, PDP is the ruling party, but there are other parties. You have the Labour Party, you have ABGA, you have UPP, and a host of other political parties. You see, the, we, in most cases, what we do or what we find in public domain, they are mostly misconceptions. Because we are you tie the political system to two major political parties when we know that there are, uh, we don't have two-party system in Nigeria. It means it's, it's wrong. There are other political parties. Then, but the dominant ones are people. Yes, if when you talk of dominant parties, the dominant parties, you now talk of the ruling PDP in the state and the opposition party, which is APC. Assuming that a party, one of those parties, will not be going into election, it does not also take out the fact that there are no other parties going to election. Again, PDP is not marrying over uh, uh, court judgment. You know that the law has a very long arm and a long, justice rather, has a long arm and a long memory. Once you infringe on the right of a particular law, or you become unjust in the process, justice, no matter how long, will find you wherever you are and still catch up with you. What you are seeing is that if someone, sometime, yesterday, contravened the law and tried to run away from that same law because it has a long arm and a long memory. Mm. It will remember you in catch the future and stretch forth its arm to catch up with you. That's exactly what you find when you are talking about the judgment delivered by the uh, uh, justice or motor show of the federal high court. It's not a river state high court. It's not a state high court. It's a federal high court. But I'm not a lawyer, so I don't like going into areas that I don't have proficiency in. It is good for you to uh, keep that question for lawyers someday, sometime when they will appear Political on your speaking. program. But politically speaking, for us, it also gives us further impetus to work hard. Because the Nigerian state, we have seen a lot of injustices perpetrated on people who ordinarily ought not to face such. As PDP members, we have seen a lot. As people contesting election over time, we have seen a lot. So, as a candidate in the forthcoming election, I will not, I repeat, I will not relax on that platform that a particular party uh, has been declared by a court not to fill its candidates in the, in the election. So I am not relying on that. And you know that there are different levels of uh, litigation. And also, for we in the PDP, we are not relying on that. If you go to the PDP campaign office and say, it's a beehive of activities. And we have planned out what to do day by day, minute by minute, on a weekly basis, uh, fortnightly until we get to election. We are preparing for election because it is time to prepare. So that's exactly what we are doing. We are not marrying over right. whatever judgment that has been given okay. by the court. Mr. Speaker, uh, just before I throw the next question, let's uh, allow a caller to make his contributions. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Stewardship with us. Thank you. Uh, I'm to the and the Honorable Speaker of Shiva State House of Assembly. Please, could you, could you say your name and where you're calling from first? My name is Anele Haitin, calling from Ibo Eche, in Shiva State. Anele calling from Ibo Eche, go on. Now, uh, my, my contribution is that uh, the God has to guide in personality and the Speaker and the Assembly of House of Assembly 
and the entire commandment of the state, and the body of the union, the accomplishment has acquired by the grace of God. We read the several religious and religious and the religious acts. And may you remember in the book of the world, to Udo Dino, express you, and take care of you. Uh, Ali, could you, Ali, could you confine yourself to the issues we are discussing here? Thank you so much. You are being completed. Thank you so much. We heard you. Yes, Mr. Speaker, you want to respond to that matter? You know, you know, uh, that is the essence of uh, uh, democracy, the beauty of democracy. You know, when you listen to the public, it also helps us as legislators to work. You know, the man who the caller who contributed talked about how we are doing well, the governor is doing well. He even prayed for us yes. to do more. But that, you know, every man is selfish by nature. Mm. Now, he specifically mentioned the attention. road. Yes, he drew attention to the one that affects him. Uh, yes, directly, which is the uh, Umbuebule yeah. road. And yeah. all. You, you know, such thing, you, need, you don't just sweep it under the carpet. I have taken into account, I have taken note of what yes, he sir. raised now. So that even tomorrow when I go to his excellency and I discuss it, in case, uh, you know, the society is big, yes. so many things, so many projects competing yes. for attention. Yes. In case it's a major project government can consider. Yes. Of course, you have several budgets that will even come, even after this one, if it is possible, where there is supplementary budget, such things, but you cannot do everything at the same time. So, uh, it is good. also good. That's good to know. Let's take this call again. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Say your name, where you're calling from, please. Yes, I'm a uh, horrible yeah. promise. Hello, yes. Promise, hello, sir. My name from a great family. Paul, Paul, uh, uh, promise, hello, sir, calling from a chair. Yes, thank you, young That's my name. Thank you. So, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I uh, want to thank you for this, my uh, horrible to guide you out there. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, I really want to commend the job given to Black Union, the Allotting Bank of the National Assembly. It is indeed a blessing. There is no state that all have opened it up. But what we will do is commend you and how you are managing to work with us in the State of Assembly. The God Almighty is blessing and that is the blessing of our dear state. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you can see if we are not doing well, people. Uh, I'm now. Uh, I'm now. This is hot seat. Yes, I can is. put it that yes, way. It if the work we are doing there is full of suspicion, it's not transparent enough. Mm -hmm. What you'll be hearing will be different. So once you find yourself in position of trust, in leadership position, you must. As a matter of necessity, take into account public good, which is exactly what is happening in this state. Ordinarily, if the governor is selfish, you cannot see projects across the 23 local government areas. 23 local government areas of the state. You cannot. But you can see a man who has vision, who knows the terrain. Because if you want to go into warfare with your enemy, you must know the terrain. You must have the right army. You must be able to assess your weapon. Yes. And because Governor Wiki has knowledge of the terrain, the geography of the state, so he knows what to put where. That is why you can see all these prayers. You can hear people praying for him and praying for the assembly to do more. Mr. Speaker, let's just take this call and then we'll come back to our uh, questions. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Michael. I'm calling from Oma Avenue of East Moigo. Michael, I'm calling from Moigo. Go on, Michael. I want to upload our investor on this. And it's a skill. We have a skill. We have a skill. We have a skill. We have a skill. And it's a project skill. So I commend them for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, I want to say something. I want to talk with the speaker. Go on, he's listening to you. There is a problem in our community. You know, I listened to a telecast that the Commissioner for Education was uh, telling us that uh, the wife in situation is 
going to the fifteen thousand. But we are in no matter of community, they are already twenty two thousand. And so many people are not able to afford it more and they are home. So please, I'm calling on government to intervene. You know, my wife is going school and know what is happening, please. Thank you so much. Okay. Mr. Speaker, that's outrageous. 15,000 against 23,000. Okay. Yes. So you can see why it is good to listen. That's why he said he wanted to address me. Yes. Uh, because exactly. I'm here as a symbol exactly. representing the legislative arm of government. Exactly. And by implication, reaching me yes. means uh, that uh, message yes. can also get to the governor. Exactly. It is good to take such. Yes. Well, uh, the Commissioner for Education is there, and he referenced the Commissioner for Education who announced that. Registration of YEG, the fees mm. will be 15,000. But in Umuagbai, mm. it's now 23,000 naira. I think when I leave the studio, I will call the Commissioner for Education, draw his attention to that so that he will find out what the situation is in Umuagbai and in case it's beyond one, other secondary schools that are in the state. So that if there is any difference or there is a gap existing, the Commissioner should be able to address it. It is the duty of the executive and not the But I've heard it as representative of the people and as a symbol of uh, the legislature in the state. Okay. I've gotten that. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Uh, my name is Daniel. Daniel, calling from Boboguru. Go on, Daniel. You have the speaker of the assembly. Uh, yeah, speaker. Good day, sir. Good afternoon. I want to know why is it that uh, there's nothing like um, agricultural innovation in the middle state, but not for the use. All this rice we are talking about, we have plants everywhere. The sunlight is not working. The project, the uh, road project is commended, but that's not the all thing. We need employment for the use. So that at least we do the issue of criminality in the universe, especially. In agriculture, that's my opinion. Okay. I think the governor has made budgetary provision for agriculture. You see, that's why. And empowerment of the youth. That the budget promises to take the youth out of poverty too. The caller, the caller, he has not followed, he's not been following the trend. The okay. trend. I told you that one of the priorities of the 2019 budget is a reprioritization of the agricultural sector with emphasis on youth farming. That is youth, the youth of River State going into commercial farming. That's why government budgeted that uh, whooping song. Yeah. And you know, he, he talked about rice. There are areas you cannot grow rice. Depending on the nature and character of the soil and the terrain, there are areas you cannot produce, you can't uh, 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 engage in rice farming, but there are other agricultural, uh, uh, how do I put, agri uh, uh, agricultural, uh, Agri the seeds, yes, yeah, yes, seedlings that can do well mm. in such areas. But principally, the focus, one of the highlights and one of the visions of the present 2019 budget is to generate employment for the youth. It is clearly stated, even while the governor was presenting the budget of 2019, mm -hmm. he clearly stated it. I re echoed it in the second reading of the budget of the estimate yeah. by yesterday, the appropriation bill. Okay. And even in your studio, it was one of the areas I highlighted yes. that state government is making effort to ensure because agriculture is one area, it's one sector that can generate employment for our teaming youth. And let him agree, the caller should be able to know that the budget of 2019 has made provision for that. We have to take off. Once we take off, of course, the, you know, when you, when you commercialize agriculture, there are other uh, uh, industries, guys, the other industries like a chain mm. that will hook up to the main product or the main produce that the farm is producing and by implication, the multiplier effect of such is the employment of youths to engage themselves in meaningful 
production, mm. which will help them to take them off the street mm. and other vices. Mr. Speaker, let me take you back to uh, politics. Uh, the governor has often asserted in public discourse that uh, the PDP is not contesting election with any political parties or candidates. Rather, it is contesting election with INEC and the security agencies. What's your take on this? Do you subscribe to this assertion? You know, the governor sees it all. When someone makes a statement like the governor, you have to take him serious because he knows what he is talking about. For me, take for instance the election of uh, December 10, 2016, the rerun election. You are a reverse man. You were in this state. Yeah. You saw what happened. How everything was against us. Mm. We had nothing. The difficulty. Even on the day of election, my supporters, six of them were shot at Ingo. But mm. this God, his grace is all sufficient. None of them died. I see. None of them, they lay, I took them from Ingo straight to UPTH for the bullet wounds to be treated and the pellets mm. removed from their bodies. Uh, their bodies. So when the governor is saying that, he knows what he is talking about. And as journalists, as pressmen, you can't feign ignorance that you can't see what is happening mm. or you don't hear. For us, who are politicians, we know all these things. So when the governor is crying and saying, we are not contesting election against any political party, we are not contesting, it's an elder in the family telling the children that this is what I'm seeing. And because I'm seeing this to protect my children, I have to cry aloud. Mm. That's exactly what the governor is doing. He is not, he's not wish hunting anybody, he's not maligning anybody, but he's saying the truth. Democracy, there must be an umpire which is independent National Electoral Commission. The umpire must be impartial so that you leave a level playing field for the participants. A situation where the umpire is, in, is partial, it means people will not have faith in the system. And once people do not have faith in the process, what becomes of the process? You know, it, it can lead to chains of reaction that will not be good for society. So it is better ab initio that true Democrats should be out to defend democracy. The governor you are seeing is a Democrat. So he starts from the beginning to defend democracy. Not everybody can speak out like he does. But because he knows, because we have suffered such faith in the past, and you know in political science, conditions that gave rise to a particular result in the past, when they play up themselves again, they will give rise to a similar result. That is why politics is a science. Mm. So the governor crying foul as an elder who lives in a family, mm. in a house where you have members of the household, is crying mm. like the proverbial hen mm. to protect the chicks, mm. which are the children. Mr. Speaker, uh, a record show that security and INEC are not the only establishments that hinder the electoral process. The judiciary too. Take for instance the 2015 rerun elections where the judiciary admitted um, evidence uh, submitted by the security agent, the police, against the umpire, the INEC. Do you still have faith in the judiciary in case elections end up in litigations? I have faith in the judiciary because I believe the holiness associated with the courtroom and adjudication itself is one thing that gives people hope and confidence in society. If people do not have hope that they will have justice, they can secure justice, it means life will be hopeless and society, of course, will disintegrate. Mm. I have faith as one who believes in the justice system. As a lawmaker, 
I have faith in the judiciary and I believe that the judiciary will continue with the reform introduced by the CJ, mm. the Chief Justice of Nigeria, that the judiciary will continue to serve as the last hope of the common man. So for me, as part of society, I have hope in them. Mm. Uh, we'll wrap up, but uh, let's just take this question. Uh, the governor is uh, contest, recontesting again for the election. The coming weeks, elections are just three, four weeks from now. Uh, what would you say are the differences between Governor Wiki and the rest of the candidates on the other side, on the other parties? The difference between Governor Wiki and the other candidates, mm -hmm. if there are, is, is, is well beyond a yawning gap. You can spot it. For me, not because I'm part and parcel of this government. As a reverse indigent, I have seen past governments in this state. I have also been opportune to be part of some of them. But I tell you, not because I'm on camera, not because I'm speaker of Rivers State House of Assembly, that this is one man that knows what he is doing. Development. It's not a one-off thing. When development does not take into account future development, the things to come, mm. the ones you are not seeing, it means you are the character of development you have in such society will be haphazard. But if you take out time to look at what Governor Nyeso is doing, you find out that the development of today, the capital infrastructure put in place today dovetails into the one that will come tomorrow. That is development. You don't begin to put up a structure because you are in position, you just want this to be done, and it does not have connection with tomorrow. Look at this road, the road you are driving to RST. Yeah, Woji Road. Mm -hmm. Yes, the second Woji yes. Lele Road. I'm from Mandon. If, do, do you know how much that road has saved the Ogoni people the undone, the people, and people. other people who use that road to go to their various communities. One, in terms of man as. Secondly, in terms of economic implication. How, you, you remember how much fuel you will burn on yes. the road for you to go and come back. But now, with no effort, you can get to Andoni. I'm from Ataba in Andoni. Yes. I drive, I, I just go home effortlessly. That is what we call development. When you get to Sakbenwa, for you to go to Bori, it does not take you five minutes to get to Bori, unlike what happened before. Tell me, I'm only giving this because this is the Southeast Senatorial District, that you can also drive from here to Pobo. You can drive from here to Andoni. You know what that means? That is development. So when you see a man, he does not need to campaign. These projects should be able to come. The same thing in Calabari area, the same thing in Nogbaegba Mantoni, that is the Orashi region. The same thing you find the Eche, eh, eh, Eche axis. Mm. So, what are we saying? You can see the difference between Governor Nyeso Meze and one way. Okay, talk of Portacot itself. If you cannot develop Portacot, you can't modernize Portacot and Obiapo, which is the adjoining local government. Mm. It means don't talk of development. Some people who do not understand the nature of development will think that uh, you are concentrating effort in Portacot and Obi Akpo. No. If you cannot open up Obi Akpo, which is the next major uh, local government area to Portacot, and you have problems like we have had in Portacot with the population and all that coming up, and you are not opening up Obiakbo, Obiakbo is not developing, and people should be moving. It means we we'll have problem in the future. Mm. The, the social condition, the upheaval that will follow when Portacot is overloaded, will not be able to carry. So I also pray, I continue to advise, mm. that for the adjoining local government, Obiakbo, Elime, once you open them up as Portacot, the force of development, there is a force that follows development. Once this place is full, the next thing, development moves. That is why development is moving from the Western world to the Arab nations, then to the other third world. 
there is a force behind development. So that's exactly what is happening. Africa, time is not on our side. But uh, just before we draw the curtains, let me just ask this question. And you answer it in one or two sentences. Now, uh, incumbency factor is one potent factor that sees a man winning election in the Nigerian context. Uh, do you think that Elijah Tuka Bubaka, your presidential candidate, will win the 2019 election? In two sentences. Uh, well, uh, the incumbency factor to Nigerians today is not a factor. What is the major factor is are the people enjoying themselves or they are suffering. These are the two things that will determine the forthcoming presidential election in 2019. If Nigerians are enjoying under in this administration, they know what they, if they are not enjoying, they should be able to express themselves. But to my mind and to my conscience and those who know very well. The rational man mm. in the circumstance. Because I know that the Nigerian voters are rational yeah. and they are reasonable. They know that they are suffering and they will do otherwise. It is not incumbency factor. Because even the incumbency factor you are talking about, the people, they have the ultimate power. Power belongs to the people and not the incumbent. So it is the people that have the right, which is the electorate, to either vote you in or vote you out. Thank you. Well, those who say this program should round off, say hi. And then those who say we should continue to say nay, the highs have it. On that note, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you so much for being a part of this program. My pleasure. Yes, I just uh, played out what he used to do in the house. <laughs> well, on that note, let me thank all of you for joining us this pro on this program and making your contributions. Let me also thank those who are behind the camera, uh, pressing the right buttons to make this program a success. My name is Solomon Nelson Braid, signing off to join you again next Thursday with another guest. Thank you so much and bye-bye.